I'm Josh Rafter, one of the founders of Address Our Mess. Welcome to our video series. Since 2012, Address Our Mess has used their expertise to turn unclean, unsanitary houses into beautiful, livable homes for people and families across America to enjoy. In this episode, we will discuss the different levels of boarding. And here is your host, Josh Rafter. In this video, I'm going to go over the different levels and symptoms of boarding. Um, you can find this graph on our website at addressrms.com. In cases of mild hoarding, some paths are starting to be developed. Items might be ankle to shin high. Cluttered horizontal surfaces such as your counters, dining room tables. We use the official Levels of Hoarding Guide in order to help hoarders understand how severe their condition has become. Along with simple stacks or mounds of clutter, mild hoarding symptoms also include broken appliances, blocked doorways, windows, or electrical outlets, and minor reduced functionality of the living space. While mild hoarding cases can be easily resolved, ignoring these symptoms can lead to more serious issues. When getting into serious hoarding, you start to see more of a defined path. Items are probably about waist to shoulder high. The development of pathways amongst the clutter is a telltale sign that the hoarding condition has become serious. Along with broken appliances, blocked entryways and outlets, and reduced functionality of living spaces, serious hoarding conditions also include fire hazards due to stacking, broken heating, air conditioning, and ventilation systems, also known as HVAC systems, the early signs of rodent or pest infestation, as well as some minor structural damage to the home itself. Living amidst serious hoarding conditions by yourself or with family can be very dangerous. However, when pets or animals are involved in the process, animal hoarding can lead to a more extreme level of the hoarding condition. In cases of extreme hoarding, items are typically stacked above your head all the way to the ceiling. This is when it starts to impede on regular maintenance of the home, such as the plumber, air conditioner, or any other type of maintenance that needs to be done. With broken appliances, fire hazards, broken HVAC systems, and structural damage already posing extreme hazards, Extreme hoarders also suffer from the dangers of broken plumbing, domestic or wild animal hoarding, and the presence of animal or human feces, urine, blood, and other bodily fluids. When hoarding levels get extreme, precautions must be taken to ensure the safety of anyone venturing inside the hoarded home. When extreme hoarding turns life-threatening, personal protective equipment will guard hoarders helpers, and hoarding professionals from disease and contaminants from garbage, rotted food, and other dangerous hazards. In cases of life-threatening hoarding, I see so many items that a building is actually starting to fail. A building isn't typically designed to hold the amount of weight of items stacked all the way to the ceiling. Structural damages, broken appliances, fire hazards in rodents, plumbing issues, animal hoarding, and biohazards are extremely dangerous in and of themselves. However, adding expired or rotted food and the presence of hazardous chemicals to the mix make these hoarding conditions life-threatening. To avoid life-threatening diseases, possible legal implications, and heavy fining, hoarders can trust in the services of Address Our Mess to turn their hoarded home into a healthy, sanitary, livable place to enjoy their life. What are the legal implications of hoarding, eviction, your home being condemned, displacement, and even possible fines from your city or county? While legal implications vary from state to state, hoarders can incur heavy fines that will just keep piling and piling and piling and piling up. Josh Rafter explains how Address Our Mess and his highly trained team of expert technicians will get the job done right the first time, all while providing a private, discrete service. When um, we have the more intense jobs um, where protective suits need to be worn, such as Tyvek suits and everything, we say that we're doing painting so um, we don't get any paint on our clothes. Do you wear the Tyvek suits for all the jobs or does it have to be a serious condition? It's mostly um, serious conditions. Um, if we have a lot of like fleas or um, animal feces even human feces we run into, and the prolonged exposure that our team has of going into these situations day in and day out. Um, 
we wear protective suits when needed. We do offer a full service cleaning where we wipe down the walls, floors, baseboards, interior windows, the kitchen, the bathrooms, the appliances. Um, we use a plant-based antimicrobial. It's very similar to the product used in hospitals for infectious control. What's the worst um, hoarding situation that you've dealt with? I mean, I've seen items from, or I've seen jobs that are anywhere from 150 to 200 cats to over 500 rats in one home. In extreme cat hoarding situations, which are typically worse than um, dogs because cats don't drink a lot of water, they have high amounts of ammonia in their urine. So what we need to do is we need to remove all the porous items. Um, we remove the carpet, the padding, the tack strip. Um, even at times we have to remove drywall. Um, and if we don't remove the subfloor, depending on the severity of it, um, we seal the subfloor with an antimicrobial paint. No matter which level of hoarding you or a loved one is suffering with, Address Our Mess will be able to turn mounds of clutter and layers of dirt, dust, and grime into beautiful living conditions you and your family can be proud of. Thank you for taking the time out to review our information. We look forward to earning your business.